Hey everybody, welcome to Office Hours, this is episode 106, and we're talking about smart segments. Smart segments are an incredibly powerful tool, and we've just made a big improvement to them. Today we're joined by uh, with Dan, uh, who is our senior product manager for Nansen2. And if there's anything you want to know about Nansen2, please ask away. He's the man you need to ask, and he'll answer everything. He knows about the product roadmap, he knows what's coming soon. So very, very useful person to have as a guest. And not only that, he'll be able to tell us everything to do with smart segments. If you're new to smart segments, uh, sorry, Office Hours, Office Hours is our live um, video series where we kind of walk through uh, Nansen, latest trends, features, and more. And uh, sometimes we find some alpha. Uh, we were just talking before we started the show about uh, Prime. Um, after they made an announcement, the tokens pumped quite a bit, and we covered Prime uh, a few episodes ago, which is quite cool. So it's nice seeing some of that alpha come through now. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, but before we do, uh, Dan, do you want to make an introduction? Yeah, cool. Uh, my name is Dan or Daniel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a product manager at Nansen. I think I've been here for like two, two and a half years now. So it's, it's been good working on uh, the whole of Nansen 2 or, or, or our super app. So yeah, really exciting updates coming out. Um, but yeah, and uh, just a resident DJ as well, I guess. So. Yeah, I think this episode is going to be quite good because I think we're both on the uh, degenerate side of things. Like we're talking about meme coins beforehand. We're talking about a few addresses. I think I'll share one of those addresses a bit later on. I'm touching on Prime, who's been nailing it. I saw one of their trades was up like seven or thousand percent and unrealized gains, um, which uh, isn't too bad. <laughs> Not a bad day out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if only I could get a few more of those in my portfolio through the roof. Um, <laughs> so, um, focuses on smart segments. Um, explain, could you explain what smart segments are and uh, why why they're important? Yeah, sure. So um, I guess, I mean, even if you take a step back before you get into like smart segments, if you think about what makes Nance and like really unique, or at least one of the things is that uh, we've got like, you know, millions and millions of labels uh, across various chains. And this makes interpreting the data super easy, right? Uh, that's how you can kind of come across all of these addresses. And, and all these labels, they're essentially just different segments. So, you know, the most well-known segment is our smart money segment. Uh, but, and, and within that, it's kind of broken down into your, your DEX traders, your, your NFT, uh, your airdrop pro, NFT traders. Um, but obviously there are a whole bunch of other segments like early uh, base bridges, um, guys who are ready to prime, et cetera. So uh, what's cool about this is uh, segments is that it allows you to create your own segment. So you're not reliant on Nansen to come up with all these labels. Of course, you want to cover as many things as possible, but now through segments, you can do it yourself. Uh, so, you know, and, and it, that's, what's, that's what's super cool is because maybe you, you like more on the macro side, you want to try and find wallets that you know, buy and sell majors uh, at the tops and bottoms. Like you can try to like, curate your own uh, unique segment of that. Or if you're like, you know, in the trenches, going for meme coins, you can try to create your own meme coin segment. Um, and I've done one of those for this uh, for this office hour, so I can show you that. And, but or maybe it's like gaming, maybe it's AI, like whatever it is, like you can create your own segment. So it's super powerful. I don't think any other product offers this as well. So uh, it's it's really exciting and, and you can get like lost in segment for hours. So I, I can take us like through a segment and, and, and how to use it if you like. Yeah, I think that's a really good overview of smart segments, the idea that you can group wallets based on criteria that you set, and that allows you to generate your own alpha. Like, I think on, when we launched Nansen 2, you ran through a few examples on AI, I think AI coins, and some of those addresses were seriously profitable. Like, and it's just so a easy to just start bringing one or two tokens together if you think there might be a trend coming on to find those addresses that are, are, are able to like nail those narratives. So whether it's AI gaming, maybe AI gaming, maybe it's meme coins. Yeah. And then from there, you can just see what they're all doing and then just use various different features in the Nansen to really extract that alpha. And I haven't seen others all do this. Um, and I think that's really, really exciting. I think not enough people realize the value of it. So I'm really excited to know that you've got a few examples for us and you'll be able to walk us through them and just show the various use cases. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like it's one of those things that you have to have to come here. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like compared to signals, like signals, you go there, you just like take in like all these great kind of AI produce signals. With here, you have to like think about it a bit more, but 
when you start work, when you start using it, you actually realize it's exceptionally powerful. Um, and there's like so much alpha. Every time I, I start using segments, I find something new. Whether it's like a new segment, an interesting wallet to follow, uh, yeah, you, you can get, really get lost in it. Um, yeah. So you, shall we go through the process of making a segment first before going through some of the ones that you've uh, created? Cool. Yeah. So quite quite simple. Uh, I kind of skipped it already, but just go to the smart segments uh, tab here. You go and click on new segment. Um, so we've got a bunch of conditions here. Um, and, and that's how you create segments. Like it's, you just take these conditions and, and you add them together and, and, and you know, we generate it for you. So we've got, you know, holds token, uh, top holders of a token, first holders of a token, um, and then the same for NFTs. Uh, except for NFTs, we've also got traded uh, NFT. And then there's like exclude label functionalities. You know, and, and then you can also group them. If you really want to get quite complex, it's like add in a whole bunch of different and all conditions. Um, so, it, I mean, it sounds maybe, and maybe it looks a bit more intimidating, but uh, it's, it's pretty simple. So like, let, let me start off with an example. Uh, I think last time, we, I think Addicts was mentioned Cypher. So like, I've been quite, quite interested in it since then. Um, so you just put in the token name. What we've added recently is this USD value, which is also super useful for meme coins because well, like the <laughs> Euro units, it's like, I don't know, it was like, I had to do these like mad mental calculations and, um, yeah. You ever say that that improvement was something that I was calling for because personally that I use, I use segments for a lot of meme coins. And when you're trading meme coins, when they're worth 0 0.0000001 dollar yeah. <laughs> you start having to get the calculator out so i think this is one of those things where it's just like with the improvements to smart segments it's, it's improving the usability side of things so there's devaluations adding more criteria just allowing you to do a lot more with them yeah 100 percent. i mean like for me this is like a, a big improvement like another cool thing we did which we didn't have before let's make this ten thousand actually um is like we didn't have the state so it was like the whole they had to like the segments like they held it now you can go back in the past and see what like if they held at a certain time. So this is also like one of my favorites. So I was looking, I wanted to know like who, like who held Cypher uh, before it went on like also like quite a big run. Um, so, cause that's like, yeah, I'm always interested in finding wallets that, that are early, right? Like that is, I mean, that's like what's super powerful. Uh, and then you hope that they're gonna be early to, to something else. Um, or it's also just like interesting to find them because like if you see they start selling, then you, you know, it's also probably a good time to get out. So, so it's, yeah, it's quite a simple one, just a condition like uh, let's generate the segment. So they hold they held more than ten thousand dollars of cipher between I think it was the first of September to the first of November. Um, so what's quite cool now as was like you can see all these different bots here, which maybe you're interested in, um, particularly yeah, or well, maybe not. Maybe this management one you want to see like when employees kind of get their, uh, or when the team kind of gets allocated and, and follow whether they're buying us or whether they're selling. Uh, but for, for this case, like I said, we're not that interested in that. Uh, we can just exclude them. So you can like fine tune your segments. For me, this was like a big thing, especially if you have like exchange wallets and segments, it can get like really noisy. Um, so now we have just got uh, like individuals and funds. Um, so here we've got like 26 wallets uh, that were like, super early to or relatively early to cypher we always got alex <laughs> um, ceo uh doing very well uh and then a few other funds so there's some smart money there there's cmt digital and you can scroll through through it and uh and, and see who's there and also super simple to save we can just say uh early cypher I was going to say whales. I don't think necessarily whales, but it's just for this instance. You see that, and you can describe. Uh, you can add an additional description. Um, so that's like the segment saved. Um, but what's quite cool is you can go in, into Profiler now, and look at these 20, 26 wallets, um, and see what what else they hold. So this is always like super interesting. Uh, you can see okay, obviously you hold Beam as well, like another gaming token, Matic. Maple, and you, you can scroll through and like, if there's anything interesting. Um, so, I mean, and let's say, I don't know, I actually didn't know what this token is, uh, but no let's idea. say you want to, yeah, <laughs> no, no idea. But let's say you somehow, for some reason, you're interested in this token. You would click on it, 
uh, and like you want to know of that segment, like who actually held that token. Uh, so you just go to filter, then you go name by smart segments, and you click uh, click that uh, that segment, and then you'll see like these are the uh, the holders. So um, this may like I don't know. This doesn't actually seem like the most interesting token. But, uh, <laughs> but I think the point in there is there's like it highlights that when you create a segment, it, that's not where you finish. Like there is so much more that you can do from there. And so with yeah, the example exactly. of using Profiler, you can then, if you're trying to find a narrative, if you bring two tokens together or trying to find early addresses, this allows you to kind of surface what might be trending um, or what other addresses are interested in. And then from there, when you're starting to do your research on different tokens, maybe within that trend, you can then filter to buy that uh, segment so that you're able to understand their activity. If they're only to one token or maybe only to a narrative, you can then just, just dive in. I think the really cool thing as well is that you don't your once your segment's completed, it's it's not finished. You can edit it, you can tailor it based on your needs and stuff like that. Maybe for example, the token that you included within the segment has actually not performed as well as you thought it would, and another token has replaced it. You can switch that up so that you can continue to make that segment work for you and the workflows that you have. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like actually, on that last point, but like continuing uh, continuing to tailor it. Like exactly, I was looking at this yesterday. Funnily enough. Uh, so I created this uh, segment. Um, so this is I call like this my like my early NFT segment. So what it is is these are like the first thousand holders of punks, uh, and anyone who was like the, uh, the first thousand holders of Board Ape Yacht Club or Pudgy Penguins. And like the rationale behind this was like they were they were into NFTs in the 2017 cycle, so like pretty early on, or when, whenever punks first came about. And then they're also early, like four years later with Board Ape Yacht Club and, and Pudgies. Um, and there's some really cool wallets in here that I found, like this Toasty Onion has absolutely crushed it. I started following them um, on my smart alerts and I like, every time I see them buy like an NFT specifically, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, following it. But what I did was like now, I think the biggest uh, like NFT mint on Ethereum at least happened on Saturday. It was like a uh it's called Pep Pepulate or something like that. Uh it's by Matt Fury. He was like the original guy who um who actually created like the Pepe meme. Um so it was like his own unique collection. Uh it was pretty cool. Oops, yeah, did I say he traded that? Uh yeah, so anyway, so I was like, I wanted to see like was there anyone from the 2017 cycle, 2021, and now like still around and active. Uh, so I came across these two addresses. Um, and this one, I could see like a lower net worth, uh, maybe it's just like a DJ wallet. But I jumped, <laughs> you know, I jumped in this one because like they got like 1.4 million. Um, did it, did I, oh, sorry, I, I opened it in new tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does that. Um, so it's still sharing, yeah. So I jumped in here and I was like, okay, like this looks like quite an interesting wallet. And then I was looking at all the labels so just to view more. And I was like, okay, legendary, legendary NFT collector, super interesting. And then I saw, oh, this is like actually crypto paths wallet in Frantic. Like, uh, I don't know if you oh, know. That's interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, it was super cool. I was like, okay, uh, path. I actually bought, I actually held his Frantic keys. Uh, it was super cool. Um, and he's done really well. On, on this Doge play. This is like the original, like Doge, um, like the original, I think it was the original picture and they fractionalized it into an NFT. Um, so he was actually shilling me, well not shilling me, but telling me like, you gotta buy this. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, but like, why would you get it in the original Doge? Um, and yeah, I, th I mean, I was, I was wrong. And he, he was right, it's gone up like a ton. Uh, I think yeah. it was like around so. I remember, I remember when that happened because it was like fractional NFTs were the rage and everyone was buying fractional NFTs or fractional, I think it was. And I saw it and I was like, oh, I, I made, I bought some, but then ended up thinking it's going to continue to go higher. I was trying to price it in terms of Doge, but I guess that was very uh, left bell curve of me and it didn't work out. I sold it at a loss, but really interesting to see Path because I know he's like very bullish on this and you can see his activity there, like how it's just continued to hold through that. And the cool thing here is that you can like look at these addresses and see their behavior and how they approach things. And by yeah. understanding how these like profitable or, like traders are doing like in the market, you can realize like how you can help adjust your own behaviors and try to think in like different time frames and understand their behaviors and their patterns and stuff like that. So you can help 
understand and price entries and exits. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's like, um, and then I can like also like from doing this, like maybe realize okay, I actually really need to start following pass wallet as well. <laughs> and I like, got actually I, I knew he was always big into NFTs, but I didn't realize like how how well he had actually done. Um, so I went through here and I was looking like all well, this like his total revenue, and he's yeah. I was like okay, so smaller is going to be set up for him. Um, <laughs> yeah, and when you're talking about Taste the Onion as that smart money address, I, I've noticed Taste the Onion in a bunch of things as well. Like it's interesting to see that you've also been following that address. So yeah. there's like when we look at smart money, there's all loads of different addresses they're labeled, and I feel like there's just one or two every now and then. That everyone in the team just kind of looks at it and goes, ah, like this is quite interesting. And it's, it's, it's like follows along. And um, one of the dresses, well, that I'm quite keeping an eye, eye on at the moment is uh, a guy called Mick Fly on OpenSea, who I actually didn't realize I, I actually follow on Twitter and actually, and uh, in a different, we're in a different community. So we talk to each other quite regularly. And they're like in everything. So, and they're so quick into different like dex traits. Um, so that's another address you can keep an eye on. Just just one of those ones that I always see in you know, like that meme coin trade side of yeah. things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, talking about that, I was actually looking. So, like, what I did here in this segment um, was I was looking like all the, like, I guess, like the most successful memes on Ethereum at least. Um, so it's obviously like Bitcoin, Mog, Pepe. Then what I, how I created this was like I looked at the dates, like similar what we did with Cipher, right? Like just look at the dates before they had like these massive runs, um, and and see like and, and see who who held them. So um, there are like thirty four wallets in the segment. And all of them have done like exceptionally well. Um, so I mean, talking about like a single wallet that kept on popping up in every single one, it was <laughs> this one here, this Arctic. Uh, yeah, she's actually crushed it. I, th I mean, I think she's like I think she got 160 followers. Um, but I was I was quite impressed. I can actually let me let me go into it and then I'll come back to the profile. But uh, yeah. yeah, just uh, yeah, I can if you go, if you go into Mog, uh, yeah. She's like pulled it all the oh. way down here. Absolutely, oh, oh. yeah, crashed it. Um, and then, yeah, I was. I mean, you like you go through all of them. They're all they're all like that. She bought on super early to all of them, and then all that like smash around. Um, so, but what's super interesting is, yeah, like once again, you can see it's interesting. <laughs> she actually on a lot of memes, which are, or like not a lot, but she like is shaving some off. So. Uh, I'm not saying mean coins are, are over, but uh, she she's taking some profit at least. Um, but what's also super cool is like so now we've got the segment of thirty four wallets uh, that were all early to like multiple mean coins. And what, like, what's interesting here is or like what I was doing is like you know what else uh, do they own? And funny enough, like there's always like Bobo uh, here who's it's like a hundred million, so it's not like too small. Um, but like this uh, segment actually earns more Bobo than Bitcoin, like just by a bit. But that was quite interesting. That we got, I know this token is quite close to your heart as well. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, no, for sure. Like when you're talking about Bobo, like that's uh, now we've signed like, like segmented off, uh, pardon the pun, into like meme coins. Like Bobo is one of those coins I've noticed a few smart money addresses in at the moment. A lot of them, yeah. like in there, the tokens perform quite well actually in the recent market. I haven't seen much on socials about it, which I'm quite intrigued about given that, as you say, like there are some smart money addresses, like there's some interesting addresses in there that are trading the meme coin narrative. They've nailed Bitcoin, they've nailed like Mog, et cetera, Pepe. Like, I don't know, it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. one that I'm keeping my eye on at the moment. Um, I'm pretty risk off yeah. at the moment, but I have I have seen it pop up a bit at the moment, so. Yeah, I mean, there's this one, and another one that I saw like a lot of people also talking about, like funny enough yesterday was, uh, maybe it's, is it gone here? Yeah, it was just like this kick. I don't know oh. what it is, there, but I saw a lot of people. Like, it was up like ninety percent yesterday, and I think now like the market's kind of had had a bit of a red day. Um, <laughs> so now it's down, but it was a lot. A lot of people jumped into this, um, so it was it was quite interesting to see. It was like yeah, it was ranked much higher, but so like it could be an in interesting entry. Um, I, I just need to go and see like where the people are still holding or what the situation is. But um, yeah, it's like a real cool way to figure out, like, I don't know, find any meme coins that maybe haven't done like a 10X already. Um, yeah, there, there's some interesting ones. There's also- Shall we create a segment quickly just to see maybe combine maybe Bobo and that other one, Kex, whatever it was? 
yeah sure let's do that uh and maybe like the first 200 holders or something like that just kind of show that feature off to see if i'm oh, assuming yeah. that they're early to these coins um maybe yeah. there's something there that we can maybe use to extract for alpha should we do the first should we do the first holders of, of over yeah let's do that so see if you find all and so this is what what Dan's doing. This this is kind of like how I also do some of my research. So I try to find tokens or addresses that are interesting, find what they're holding, and then just try and create different segments based on that. So then, see is there something that I'm missing? Maybe the addresses I'm following aren't the right ones. I just kind of want to get an understanding of what's going on. And you can apply this to so many different narratives. And the fact that you can like remove labels and stuff like that and really curate. So sometimes what I like to do is really focus on dex traders um because especially the seven day dex traders because they're the ones that are reading and out making a lot of money realized gains um but yeah I, I find that really really interesting yeah so let's say there's like really uh, holders and they look pretty wealthy <laughs> that's always a good sign <laughs> they seem to be yeah uh so I mean, obviously, this, so this must be owned by the team, right? Like yeah. over marketing. Um, let's see if there are any. Yeah, just a lot of high. Like it looks like a lot of fresh wallets. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. Haven't like seen. Maybe we should like adjust it. Like, just make this number smaller. So this is quite like quite cool. Like previously, you couldn't. Um, uh, like, you had to like delete the whole condition to redo it. I mean, like you had to at least make this like a hundred actually. Uh, but you had to like delete the uh, condition and like re-add it. Um, so now you can edit, which is also pretty pretty useful. It is incredible. Like I'm, I'm very thankful the devs did something. I think I made like one or two tickets about that. <laughs> you just want to sometimes just tweak something as you redo it, and it's, it's quite cool seeing this feature is getting those like small improvements that I think honestly make it so much more powerful and enjoyable to use. Because what we we spent twenty minutes so far, and we're creating one segment, then using that to put another one, and another one, and another one, and then maybe we're going to profiler, we might see some interesting things, and that's just really really useful, like really cool. Um, it's important mm -hmm. to note that none of this is obviously financial advice. We're just trying to explore what's going on chain, um, picking up on narratives and seeing what we see and relying on the data. So do not ape. <laughs> do not ape, exactly. I wonder if we actually input the, like the fake logo here or like a, a scam token. Yeah. Like, I don't see it yet. No, maybe. Hmm. Mm, let me go back. Maybe yeah. this one. Well, I mean, it does have the bourbon mark. Let's, yeah, let's jump in here. Oh, sorry, I keep on there. Uh, I didn't do the right click. <laughs> yeah, small tip. Um, if you do press command to click, you open up into a new tab. Um, often in the workflow, that's what I do, just when you've got a few addresses that you want to kind of follow and see what's going on. So, yeah, make sure you do that. If you want to do a bit of research on a token, I find that really useful to, once you like hover over addresses, write a command click open a few addresses up and then take your research from there. Uh, it makes life a lot easier. Okay. So, okay. No, th this was the quick one. There's obviously like, there's always a million scam tokens. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so you always have to be like wary with, with anything like the screen that was Nance and that you're putting the right address in. Um, interesting. So this is the team's one. I'm assuming it's the devs wallet or something. Um, they, or at least I would just create it that ENS name, which they definitely could. Um, and they, they've been selling, uh, which is something interesting, but the price is going up. So, um, but let's see if there's anything else. Is there any other like wallets you want me to go into? Or? Uh, i tell you what, something I found really interesting at the moment is Zion. It's a meme coin that was launched in like November and it's been pretty flat for, for a while now. And then in the past couple of weeks, it's just flown. Like, and it's really, really interesting to see that like it's just pumped out of like nowhere. I completely missed it. Um, I've been telling everyone in Slack that I've missed it and I'm feeling a lot of FOMO from it, but I'm happy that everyone else is winning. Um, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing long term here. So I feel yeah. like there's something there with Zine maybe. Um, we'll only cover the coverage on uh, Ethereum um, with, with segments. 
And then maybe so, one thing I've noticed as well is that there's a lot of dresses that hold both Zion and Trump, which is the mega, mega meme coin. So let's do Zion. The Trump is one that I, I wish I wish I held. So yep. what, what's the minimum be like a thousand, ten thousand? Let's uh, just do a thousand. A thousand. Uh, any day till we just leave it for now. Let's leave it for now. Cool. Um, and let's add. The Trump was a magma. Uh, it's, tr it's Trump, but it's like magma. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's, that's the one, I think. Cool. Yeah, this is, yeah. I saw this one early, Trump. I saw Trump early. And I don't know why I, I was like, I don't know why I didn't buy it. Uh, it was pretty rookie of me. Yeah, same here. I like for me, like I'm really interested in polyfy as like a, a sector almost. I remember writing something about that. I think we were in like our alpha discord. And I really like and I kind of believed in the sector because I actually bought another meme coin, DeSantis beforehand, which was uh, a meme coin about Ron DeSantis before the uh, Twitter space. And it was quite it was going up quite significantly before then. He was going to announce the presidency, but the Twitter space worked and everything just went to zero. So like the idea is really like meme coins are just all about attention. And if a candidate has a lot of attention, there's a lot of traction from there, then there could be something there, which I find really fascinating. And then from yeah. there, we've got a huge year for elections since 2024 all across the world. So there's going to be a lot going on there. There's going to be a lot of memes, meme coins. It's very different. In 2016, we had uh, memes, maybe 2024 is meme coins. Um, and that will probably create even more attention, the more attention, the higher it goes. Uh, typically when it comes to a lot of these meme coins if you look at like dog with hat for example it's another example where attention over everything um there's no fundamental value if you if you will um but yeah like i, I find that interesting and yeah sadly didn't uh put too much into trump i got him very early but um, um it's not enough <laughs> it's, it's almost like a prediction market in a way like if 100%. you stick to win then like it will go up right um and then like you could do with like Odin and Solana, like, <laughs> maybe that's the one. Um, so yeah, it, it is actually really interesting because people have been trying to get prediction markets right for it. And it's funny how like meme coins is almost like taking that place, uh, yeah, or, or, like, and like a derivative, like a derived way to do it. Um, yeah, for sure. I feel like when it comes to those prediction markets, like Poly Market does a really good job. Their marketing is always very funny. If you don't follow them, I highly recommend following them just for the memes. Um, but I always feel like a lot of people who want in these markets are looking for much higher returns. So maybe they found it through meme coins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Um, interesting, like the two funds here, there's like Kronos Research, Ooh. and um, which is which is pretty interesting. And obviously making this in capital. And I know you guys have tweeted about that, so. Yeah, tweeted yeah. about both. Actually, if you go into that <laughs> Kronos Research wallet, actually, I wonder if there's still if it's if that's the wallet that I've been tracking at the moment. So Kronos Research at the moment have been absolutely killing like a bunch of like trades at the moment. Um, they've built a very big position on Butterfly. But I think it might be a different address, so it's not that one there because um, it's got like something yeah, there. Um, mm, they yeah, actually, like if you go to a wallet profile of a token, actually for Butterfly, as so a wallet profile of the token allows you to see the activity for that. Uh, token for the address and then if you go down I think they may have locked it or transferred it to another address um, yeah so it's a different different address but if you look into Nansen and you look at Kronos Research we've got a bunch of different addresses so sometimes we'll see that you've got one address and their activity is slightly different from another address because they do different things at different times for different reasons um, Kronos Research is an interesting address that I've been following for a while and tweeted about it and they've been buying quite aggressively a Butterfly and then locking it up so it's quite interesting to see how that will potentially play out. I think their average price was around $350. So they're up quite a bit at the moment and they've outperformed ETH. Um, so that's just a little bit of alpha for you if you're interested in Butterfly as a token. Nice, nice. Yeah, they got some some interesting tokens. Uh, Bob. And I've also seen people talk about Bob a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, yeah, and, and, and there's a Trump. Okay, nice. Cool. I'd be curious uh, to see what that segment looks like, actually, the, the, the entire segment for those like Trump Zion overlap. Because I, I, oh, I put cool. one together earlier um, and thought that was interesting. Oh, I didn't save it. 
I have to do that again. Sorry. That's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> while you do that, I'll, I'll share my cool. screen and just share an interesting address as well while we're talking about smart money. Um, nice. And so this is an address I spoke about a few times now on Office Hours, and it's uh, DevMonds, which is a, a kind of gaming fund uh, by a few in, like, interesting people. And I've been watching them. We've got multiple of their addresses, so this is not just the only one. Uh, but I think they're really, really interesting. And what I find really fascinating about them is that if we look here on the narrative of like gaming and AI and stuff like that, like gaming, AI, memes, this is a really good fun to kind of track. So one token here is Prime. We talked about just the start of the episode, and they've just announced that they're going to do something really interesting. Check out their socials for more information about that. Um, and full disclaimer, I do own some. Um, but yeah, this, this dress is up over 600%, nearly 700% now. Um, they've been buying aggressively, been making a very interesting bull case. In fact, they're the reason, one of the reasons why I kind of looked into Prime. Um, but another thing, when we're talking about Trump as, as a meme coin, we go to again, work profile for token, up nearly, up over 5,000% on the token, and they've hardly done anything to it. Um, they're just continuing to absolutely hold it and nail it out of the park. So. I find this to be a very interesting fun to understand like being very early to narratives, especially to like wider trends. As you can see, for example, they're in November over like, such a low cost basis. Like it's incredible to see some addresses just absolutely inhale it with things like this because I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite cool. I mean, I actually, I mean, I also bought after like a long time of just seeing Prime go up. And the thing on my watch list, I just eventually decided to to, to add them. Um, and then so what I started doing is actually creating. I was like, I looked. Well, I did it two different ways. I looked at like what who are like the first thousand holders of Prime. I thought like that's always quite interesting. Like, and how many of them are still holding? Uh, so that's like an interesting exercise. And then the other one was uh, just like looking at the top uh, five hundred holders. And it, I mean, a bit of an alpha leak, but like right now you can't see small alerts for segments. But that will be out. So if you've got a big bag of Prime or any token, like it's super easy to go create a segment, like Google the top, I mean, I put in the top uh, 500 uh, wallets and then you set a smart alert. And if you see them start selling, then maybe it's a good way to to get out or, or consider getting out. Uh, equally, if they start dabbling down, then maybe there's an, uh, another reason to, to be more bullish. So yeah it's, it's really exciting like, i'm glad you kind of teased that because that's part of the like we're working on some workflow content at the moment so on the marketing side of those things and one of the things we realized is that we we should be sharing a lot more of those workflows and so being able to create a smart segment for tokens that you're interested in and be able to track them in real time with smart alerts so you whenever they make a transaction you'll get a notification whether in slack discord or telegram i use telegram we have some in slack as well so if you want to ape while you work there you go um, <laughs> but it's really cool because then you can start really curating your alpha and really get an edge in the market. And as it starts to heat up now, like uh, this could be a really interesting alpha leap really for you as a feature and workflow for you. I'm continuing to check out DevMons and I'm just looking at their portfolio, uh, 759 uh, ETH worth of NFTs, of which 284 is worth in parallel avatars where they're up quite significantly. And they've just bought a bunch by the looks of things. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting. And there's also some more parallel uh, content here, which is uh, really interesting. So again, just wanted to share that while Dan was uh, creating that segment. Um, I will continue to share this address. I might post it on socials later on actually, but I highly recommend tracking some smart money, especially when you find some interesting smart money addresses within the trends that you're interested in, because that's where there's a lot of alpha because you find addresses that have proven like proven record or success. So depending on their sector, obviously, if they're an airdrop pro, they're more airdrops. They're fun. Maybe they have different techniques, but it's worth really diving into that smart money side of things. Um, I will share the stage back to you. Yeah, that's cool. I actually started when I did create the the segments. I yesterday on Prime, uh, they're like the ones that kept on coming up. So I said, <laughs> I said a smart list for them as well. I was like, they, <laughs> it feels like they they got a really good take on it. So I mean, that's what's super interesting. Like you find these wallets that have been in a token for much longer than you probably got like. You know, they might understand, like at least initially, um, they might understand it better than you do. So it is a, like, super interesting following their movements, seeing what they do and how that affects like your like investing or trading. Um, yeah, like massive use case for, for Nansen. Oh, um, huge. So this is not the first page. So this is it. I went back to Profiler for Design and uh, and Trump. So obviously Design and Trump on top. Um, <laughs> As, as as would be expected 
Uh, but then interesting, like, yeah, Mog, Mog appears again. Um, I was, uh, yeah, another one I, I, I could have. Yep. <laughs> I don't know, it didn't resonate with me, but uh, I was clearly wrong. Um, and then there's this token, which I'm actually not that familiar with, but it's interesting how it's in the top five. Prime again, obviously from the fund that you mentioned. Um, and then, yeah, it's interesting. You can see, obviously, some fans on here because you've got, like, a real mix of like, <laughs> tokens mixed with, like, some like ones with, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to say maybe better fundamentals, but uh, that aren't. <laughs> um, Bobo again. Then, yeah. AI tokens. Pepe, of course, yeah. So, I mean, should we, is there any token that you want me to, like, jump into and, and explore? I'm not too sure, actually. I'm noticing some of like, those... Uh... Uh, what do you call it? Farming. So it's puffery, for example. You can see some farming going on there. Like, so it's interesting to see the mix. It seems like there's some like people just having a bit of fun there. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was interesting just to kind of like bring that segment together. And while you're talking about like interesting addresses and stuff like that, one thing we're promoting at the moment on Nansen is like smart money workflows, and just kind of figure out how to use Nansen better effectively. And I want to share an address that I found really interesting that can be really beneficial like potentially if you hold like sheep and just to show you an example of how you can use smart money as just as an indicator for like what's going on so this address is a smart money um a dex trader and on the surface it's really interesting they're one of the most profitable addresses ever but if we look at how much ship they hold they hold 2.6 trillion and they've been recently if we go to the six months they've started to really offload their holdings um if we go back to the initial transaction, um, for just over three and a half thousand dollars, they bought fifteen point two eight trillion of Shiba, and they're massive, a huge while they've been selling a little bit off. Current valuation is four hundred thirty six million. And when I first posted about it on Monday, I think Monday or Tuesday, that valuation was five hundred million um, at the value. So it's just in just a relative to show like the price has started to decline. And this is a really good indicator to show that look, this address has started to sell as soon as the price has started to fall. So it's one of those things where you can just pick up and maybe set smart alerts for to say like, okay, this address is, has substantial influence potentially on the market because the current valuation, like the current value of their ship is 73 million. And if they're bearish, um, maybe that's an indicator that you could be using to benefit from. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share that as well. Just when we're talking about like indicators and, uh, when you're talking about smart alerts, etc., just uh, thought that might be uh, quite interesting. Yeah, that is a really interesting one. Um, I mean, interesting is like this wallet and that one that R checks wallet also taking a bit of profits, uh, which is always good. I mean, it is always good to take profit along the way, uh, especially I guess on on the coins, you know, uh, especially the newer ones as well. Uh, some of them maybe have a bit more than the and, and a bit long term holds, but um, interesting. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it, it, I mean, I guess that's the thing that maybe you won't see on Twitter, right? That is yeah. super useful in Nance. Like, you can actually see these wallets, like, just clipping a bit of profits here and there. Uh, to, I guess to remind him, like, it's not always just app only. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no yeah. point making, like, I saw someone tweet about this, is there's no point making life changing money if you're not actually going to change your life. So, you know, it's never bad to take profits. Um, so, you can use indicators of like, data, and that seems like it might help with that. Um, before we wrap up the episode, Dan, is there anything you want to share, like say anything about smart segments or are you happy with you covered everything? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we covered most things. Um, I mean, also something I will share, like, as I mentioned, we will be releasing smart alerts for, for smart segments, uh, which is really cool. So, you know, you can like, follow all these different segments that you create in addition to watching them in Profiler. Um, and we will also be adding more conditions in the future so one some things we're looking to add are potential uh like adding contracts so you can see like who's early to who's like early to uh last or like the top last depositors um and potentially looking at dex purchases so a few other things we're looking at bringing out um in the near future as well very excited about that we'll have to do another episode of office hours on that because i feel like there's a lot that we can probably extract from that um thank you everyone for tuning into office hours and um, we are going to be moving office hours to weekly soon um, so very excited about that. Uh, Dan is shipping an awful lot. Um, very excited to share. The market's heating up. There's a lot of narratives and we're keen to share uh, different workflows and how you can use Nansen to your advantage. Make sure you subscribe and like this. And if you have any questions about how to use Nansen, please ask away in the comments. 
and we'll do our best to help and help you out, help you out effectively. Um, if you want to use Nansen, make sure you use the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Um, we've got a very interesting episode of Off Sales actually coming up in like two weeks with a special guest. Um, so there's there's that as well. So I'll share more about that in the future. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone, once again, and uh, have a lovely weekend. Bye. Cheers.